Simon, talking about football management, reports suggest that managers are calling for new rules that mean uh, they can only be sacked during transfer windows and not in season, similar to that of players. Um, so you can't sack the players mid-season, so why sack managers? Is there, is there anything in this? One manager who wishes to m- remain anonymous <laughs> right. is quoted as saying, players have contracts and rules that mean they are not moved outside of the windows. It should be the same for us. Oh, shut up. I mean, this is a completely different dynamic. Managers have responsibility for more than just themselves. Players have responsibility for themselves. And because of the nature of the commercial value of a player, you have to endure uh, some of that tripe that you put up with from players that you wouldn't necessarily did do if you didn't have to. Managers are a different animal. And if the League Managers Association are seriously suggesting that putting someone into a position of authority and finding that person not fit for purpose and then affecting the entire organisation and the entire football operation as a result of it should be endured for a longer period of time than you have to. This is ridiculous. Managers are paid compensation. It's Would that the... happen in any other industry, Shot, or does it? Because it sounds ludicrous. Well, no, because it's a ludicrous argument. You know, I, I, I've never been a great admirer of the, of the League Managers Association. I don't think they contribute very much, full stop. My endearing memory of them was, was them turning up at the training ground. Uh, Ray Graydon, I like Ray Graydon as a player, but he sat outside Peter Taylor's office as I was firing him and then came out and said... Um, I'd, I'm here for my annual review of the league manager's uh, position in terms of um, how you're getting on. I said, well, he's not getting on very well because I just fired him. <laughs> uh, um, and, 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 and that's the league manager's association input. If you really are seriously suggesting, I mean, what a cowardly individual to yeah. say, I'm quite happy to tell you that I think something should happen, but I don't want my name attached to it. Bizarre. I'm so cowardly. If you believe something, stand up for it. But if you appoint a new manager, why not? Why not at least give them one season? You appointed them. Well, you'd want to give them one After season. much the last thought. Thing, the last thing you'd want to do is employ somebody, put them on a contract and then pay them for failing by giving them the boot and having to pay the rest of their contract up or significant proportions of it. So the last thing you want to do is find somebody in a job that you've recruited them for, bought players off the back of their so-called intellect and then allowed them to run amok on your football team and then have to endure it for another nine months because some imbecile in a trade union suggests that's somehow equitable. <laughs> would that even be it was you that appointed the manager? And it would be me that pays him. But Simon, would that even be on a serious note? Would that even be enforceable? If they did, if well, they... if you write it in someone's contract, yeah. Ultimately, what the, I, I can't suggest. No, I, I mean, I if a governing body dictated they, that you had to you do it as an owner of the football the club, luck. would they be dictated <laughs> to you? Could they dictate to you? Look, I mean, what you write in someone's contract and what they have to adhere to depends upon again that the parameters of what you are asking them to do in the first place. No, I'm but, saying that for governing body. But what body... they're saying is, it doesn't make any sense. What are they asking you to change? They're asking you to to accept the fact that players are on fixed term contracts. And, 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 and get to stay there. And managers don't. Yeah, but managers get to be paid. Mm. Now, it might not be the full contractual obligation mm. because the mitigation circumstances have changed around managers' compensation, but there is no other profession in the world where you get paid for failing. That's what managers who get fired do. And very rarely do they get fired for being successful. But so many of those same managers might, if given the chance, could turn it round. You well, don't know. But again, but... You're, you're, taking, you're thinking that there is a logic, uh, or, or there's an illogical response to sacking somebody. You don't sack someone on a whim. You, and there are a few... And yes, I, I take the point with Johnny Eustace. That's the case that probably is an exception that doesn't yeah, prove the rule. Yeah. Right? But the point is, is, most of the time, it's an absolute wrench to fire a manager. You've got to get rid of his backroom staff. Cost. You've got to get rid of all the, obli- all the potential decisions that he's made. They've got to be unwound because, you know, dollars for donuts, the next guy comes in, doesn't want the very things that the other manager had. So all of that is a wrench. So this sort of busyness, I mean, they'd be better off maybe inventing rules for Quidditch or something. <laughs> something useful like that for the League Managers I mean, the, the Championship has seen 12 sackings already this season. Beale's one of them. Joe Edwards, deserves, aren't they? Joe Edwards at Millwall was the latest. 12 in, one, in the season. 12. I just don't see how you could force a, a, someone who owns a business, which is a football club, to keep someone employed who's not doing the job properly. Seems bizarre. But that's the but that's the, it's not a grown up conversation, and it's not sensible. It doesn't have any sense attached to it because ultimately there is such a difference to draw a parallel between a manager and a player is just silly. So the Premier League and the EFL couldn't enforce that rule, is what you're saying? Well, given that, that a lot of the football stuff exists in the ether and it's nonsense anyway. Yes, you could enforce it if you write it in someone's contract. Your contractual obligations are. If, well, they're if, not if, doing the contract. If some you dim- are the half, owner. half <laughs> brained imbecile owner is prepared to accept that you cannot sack somebody oh, yeah. for a year and write it in their contract <laughs> yeah. right? Then, then they'll be abiding by that contract but you as an owner of made your bed should you not lie in it you appointed the manager 
Yes. And you're if you're looking for stability and, and, in football. And you, you appoint a manager based upon a degree of reputation, mm -hmm. a degree of perception, and a degree of what they tell you in an interview. And if they tell you something in an interview and they do the polar opposite, they turn out to be an absolute loon that doesn't understand what he's doing and you've made a bad appointment, in no other industry would someone say, you might have to pay for that. Mm. And ironically, that's already been covered. You do have to pay for it. See, so there's an argument that Forrest got it wrong by sacking Cooper when they did. Not yet. Well, not yet. Well, for Forrest are still alive and well and, and not in any relegation type mm. conversation at the moment. They're in a similar predicament to where they were just hovering above the relegation. I mean, we all call for stability in the game, Simon, but 12 sackings already in the Championship, 10 in League 1, 13 in League well, 2. Oh, get, yeah, it's going well. well they, know what nice to get in, they know what they're getting into But you don't as get well. stability just for stability's sake. You could make the argument that Stephen Gerrard should have been given longer at Aston Villa then. How do you square that circle when you've got Unai Emery smashing it and, and Stephen Gerrard you know, doing whatever he's doing in Saudi? The point is, is that you have to be able to make decisions and if the consequence of those decisions are financial ramifications, they are already protected. They're already in a protected position. Nobody else in any other walk of life gets protected the way football people do. You sign a contract, you, you, you're stuck with someone. And if they're bloody useless, you're stuck with them economically. <laughs> It's true, though, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I felt sure you were going to say Stephen. Can Gerard, I just ask one more question? The dance you, of the seven you know, when bills. you do when you do managers' contracts, yeah. yeah. Depending on how much they want the job or how much you want them, and that dynamic, yeah. can you actually have a situation where there isn't an amount or it's a minimal amount that you have to pay them to get rid of them because they please to be there and just say, look, yes. you can, yeah, yeah, you can mitigate absolutely. Yeah. You so can mitigate legally anyway by the very nature of someone taking a job. Um, somewhere else. I mean, Peter Taylor tried to mitigate it by taking a job in a, in a national league side right. about 15 grand and demanded that, that ultimately get lost. That's not a proper job for you. You don't get to manage a national league side. You're a former England coach, a Premier League manager. You're not managing a national league side for 15 grand so you can get me to pay the other 500 grand. Get a proper job. Do it properly. That was a good plan of Peter's. He was, the only, was the only plan he had at the did time. It, did it work? <laughs> No, did you didn't did you fill the void? No, I did no, no. I'd have loved it That's if he squeezed discussion. half a mil out of you. No. no okay, didn't. we're coming up to twelve noon. Nobody sacked in here yet. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.